Captain Frederick Fred Allister leaned on the cold metal railing of the Star Marauders Bridge. He squinted, a habit more for show than necessity, his piercing blue eyes catching each burst of frenetic movement as his crew scuttled about. They were like ants in a kicked over hill, except their anthill was a spacecraft, and they were gearing up to rob a planet blind. Xanthar wouldn't know what hit it. Fred, if you furrow your brow any deeper, we'll need to navigate around it, Zara Kellis quipped from behind a console. Her vibrant purple skin glowed under the ship's ambient lights. She flashed her shimmering wings with a fluid grace that made even the dullest tasks look like art. Zara, if you paid as much attention to our course as you do to my forehead wrinkles, we might just get there without becoming space debris, Fred retorted, his tone dry as the vacuum outside. Zara rolled her eyes, the red spikes of her hair bobbing with the motion. She flicked at the navigation controls with dexterous fingers, plotting a trajectory that dodged meteor fields and space patrols with equal aplomb. Smooth course to Xanthar locked in, Captain. Unless you're planning another last-minute detour. Last time was strategic improvisation. Fred's voice boomed across the bridge, but he couldn't hide the smirk tugging at the corner of his mouth. Of course, Captain, Zara said, her voice dripping with feigned deference. Your strategic improvisations are the stuff of legend especially that time it landed us in a cosmic fish market. Better than the intergalactic DMV's waiting line, Fred shuddered theatrically. Point taken, Zara conceded as she continued her pre-flight checks. Her hands moved with assurance over the panels, despite her mind replaying the haunting echoes of a past betrayal. Trust didn't come easy, but it felt almost natural with Fred. Gorvax Rindle towered over the cargo bay, a veritable octopus of activity. His six arms danced in a synchronized ballet, hoisting crates like mere playthings for his massive, scaly biceps. Each container slammed into place with a thud that resonated through the ship's metal skeleton, a testament to his brute strength and no-nonsense approach to packing. Careful, Gorvax. Those weapons have more kick than a three-legged Groxian mule, called out a voice from the shadows tinged with amusement. Ha! The only kick here will be us, kicking Xantharian butt. Gorvax boomed back, his deep laugh rumbling like an avalanche. He sniffed at a crate suspiciously, nostrils flaring. Hmm, these plasma grenades smell vintage? Aged in cosmic radiation, perhaps? Meanwhile, Yorin Tassal darted about the engine room, his small reptilian frame a blur of efficiency. He dove between the maze of pipes and conduits, claws clinking against metal, as he twisted knobs and tightened bolts with deft precision. Sparks flew as he welded a stubborn piece back into compliance. The scent of burning alloy mixing with the musk of engine grease. Speed is of the essence, but so is not blowing up, Yorin mumbled, his tongue flicking out to taste the air, picking up on the electric tang of charged circuits. Let's crank this baby up without turning it into a supernova shall we? A wrench slipped from one of his many hands, clattering loudly against the floor. Yorin peered at the offending tool with all six eyes, each blinking sequentially. Traitorous device, I shall recalibrate your existence later. Everything shipshape, Yorin? The captain's voice echoed down the corridor, laced with a hint of sarcasm. Unless you'd prefer a slow scenic route, Captain. Everything's running smoother than a Glabnarian's pickup line. Yorin quipped without looking up, focused on a particularly tricky calibration. Good to hear. Remember, I like my ships fast and my treasure faster, Fred retorted, the corners of his mouth twitching in anticipation of speed and spoils. Understood, Captain. This engine will purr like a kittenox on catnip, Yorin promised, giving one last twist to a dial before scampering off to his next task. He left behind a trail of chuckles and the hum of a finely tuned propulsion system ready to break the laws of physics, or at least bend them significantly. Dr. Luna Carter hovered near the medbay, 
her fingers dancing in the air. Bottles and bandages levitated around her, each finding their precise place with a gentle nudge of her mind. Her blue skin glowed softly under the fluorescent lights, a calming beacon amidst the chaos. Antiseptic, she murmured, and a bottle zipped into her outstretched hand. Because nothing says successful mission like not dying of an infection. She smirked as she returned it to the kit. Her telekinesis wasn't just for show. It made organizing a breeze, and injured crewmates were often reassured by the sight of medical instruments that moved with purpose but without a shaky hand. Ah, plasma burn ointment, she noted, her voice dripping with mock excitement. It's the latest in I just had to touch the overheated console chic. As she checked an injector for nanite healing agents, it buzzed and whirred, confirming its readiness to mend flesh or at least make a valiant attempt. Luna gave it an approving nod. Preparedness was next to godliness, or so the old spacefarer's adage went. With a final sweep of her gaze across the neatly arranged shelves, she deemed the medbay ready for whatever the cosmos threw at them, or shoot at them, or bit them with. She walked away with a satisfied smile on her face, knowing she'd be ready for whatever. Doctor, what are your thoughts on our little adventure? The captain's voice boomed across the bridge, edged with the sort of humor one finds at the brink of certain peril. Captain, she began, turning to face Frederick Allister, his stature commanding even among the sea of consoles and flashing lights. My professional opinion is that we're only marginally more likely to need this, she gestured to the medbay, than we are to get a thank you note from the Xantharian guard. Reassuring as always, doctor, Captain Fred said with a chuckle, as he stepped onto the central dais, all eyes upon him. Listen up, crew. His voice cut through the din of preparations like a laser through space butter. Xanthar isn't going to know what hit it. We've got speed. A nod to Yorin. Strength. A glance at Gorvax. And smarts. A tip of his head toward Dr. Carter. But most importantly, we've got each other. A murmur of agreement rippled through the star marauder, punctuated by an errant crate clunking into place. Sure, we might end up on a few more wanted posters, he continued. Heck, we might even have to improvise a plan B through Z. But remember, we do this together, as a team, one for all and all for the loot. A cheer erupted from the crew, a motley chorus of voices united by the promise of danger, glory, and the eternal pursuit of treasure. Any questions? Captain Fred asked, his grin infectious. Is it too late to ask for a raise? Quipped a voice from the back, followed by laughter. Get us through this in one piece, Fred shot back with a wink, and we'll talk numbers. Now, let's set a course for riches and infamy. With a collective resolve, the crew of the Star Marauder turned to their stations, the ship humming with anticipation and the low thrum of sarcasm. They were ready for anything, or at least they were amusingly optimistic about it. The Star Marauder cut through the cosmos, its engines purring with anticipation. Captain Fred Allister stood at the helm, his eyes fixed on the swirling green orb of Xanthar. A heist that would go down in the annals of interstellar thievery beckoned, and every cell in his rugged body vibrated with excitement. All right, you scallywags, Fred's voice boomed through the ship. Let's show those DMV paper pushers how a real crew operates. His motley crew, a tapestry of the galaxy's finest misfits, responded with an assorted cacophony of cheers and screams. They were ready, adrenaline pumping through their veins like high-octane fuel. Suddenly, the ship gave a shudder that could have been mistaken for indigestion if a chorus of blaring alarms hadn't accompanied it. The console, usually a calm sea of steady lights, now flickered with the urgency of a disco strobe. Fred, we've got an unexpected plus one at our party the navigator called out, his voice edged with a hint of, I told you so. Define unexpected, Fred replied, narrowing his eyes. He had an inkling suspicion of what unexpected meant in this sector of the galaxy. An energy signature, the navigator continued, and it's not bringing a gift basket. 
It's big, bad, and not here to help us blow out the candles. Intergalactic DMV, Fred muttered under his breath. The letters tasted like stale coffee on his tongue. No love was lost between him and the universe's most bureaucratic buzzkills. Looks like Agent Cynthia Travers has decided to RSVP after all, the comms officer chimed in, a smirk in her voice. She's early to the party, as usual. Typical, Fred said, the corner of his mouth twitching in reluctant amusement. She was always trying to beat us to the punchline. Should we send regrets, or are we going with the surprise you caught us act? The comms officer asked, her fingers hovering over the controls, ready for Fred's command. Neither, Fred grinned, the challenge igniting a spark in his eyes. We improvise. We always do. As the crew braced themselves, the star marauder faced the trap head on, its captain's stubborn determination serving as their shield. This cosmic game of cat and mouse had just leveled up, and Fred wouldn't have it any other way. After all, what was a heist without a little unexpected excitement? The console blipped a shade of warning red that had fashion critics across the galaxy, shaking their heads in disapproval. Captain Fred raised an eyebrow, the universal sign for here we go again, as Agent Cynthia Travers's smirking hologram flickered to life before him. Captain Alistair, Cynthia's voice was like the sound of a rule book slamming shut. I see you've decided to grace us with your unlawful presence. Fred leaned back in his captain's chair, the leather creaking under the weight of his nonchalance. Cynthia, it is always a pleasure to dodge your warm welcomes. The agent's lips curled into a smile that promised more paperwork than a tax season on planet Bureaucra 5. Agent Travers's voice dripped with confidence. Captain Frederick Allister, still playing the jester, I see. But even jesters face the music when caught stealing the king's gold, or in this case, Xantharian crystals. Allegedly stealing, Fred corrected, tapping a finger against his chin thoughtfully. You have no proof. And besides, we're just tourists who've lost our way. A common innocent mistake. Tourists with highly illegal cloaking tech and a known penchant for heist-oriented sightseeing, she retorted, her eyes narrowing. We've got you cornered, Fred. Surrender now, and I'll consider not adding mockery of the DMV to your charges. Cornered is a bit dramatic, don't you think? Fred glanced at the readouts Gorvax was flashing him from the engineering station. Shield strength holding steady, evasion routes dwindling. And as for mockery, you're doing splendid work without my help. Charming to the end. Cynthia's image crossed her arms, the gesture somehow promising paperwork worse than any cosmic storm. I must file my reports. Get authorization to vaporize your lovely little ship and all that. 25 minutes to comply, Captain. After that, well, let's say bureaucracy gets explosive. 25 minutes. Fred feigned shock and shot a sly grin at his crew. There was plenty of time to make a narrow escape and laugh about this over drinks. Your optimism is noted and will be included in my report. With a final glower, Cynthia's hologram fizzed out, leaving them in the relative peace of the hushed command center. Time to get to work, gang, Fred announced, cracking his knuckles. Let's show the DMV what happens when they mess with space rats. Preferably without actual tail loss, Gorvax added helpfully from his station. Tail loss is not part of the plan, Zara chimed in. Good, said Fred, his face gleaming with mischief, because I hate filling out injury reports. Captain Fred strode around the ship's command center his boots thudding against the metal floor with a purpose that demanded attention. The crew's eyes flicked up from their various stations. All right, misfits, Fred declared, his voice bouncing off the walls with authority from years of dodging cosmic bureaucrats. It's time we give the intergalactic DMV a taste of their own medicine. A collective groan filled the room. Skepticism and determination mingled on their faces like oil in the supernova cocktail. Listen up, he continued, pacing before a myriad of screens alight with star charts and data streams. We're going to bury them under so much red tape 
They'll think they've stumbled into an alien mummy's tomb. A few chuckles rippled through the crew, a testament to the captain's uncanny ability to lighten the mood, even when presenting a plan that bordered on madness. Hey, Zara, Captain Fred turned towards his second in command, leaning against a console, arms crossed. Her spiky red hair seemed to bristle with anticipation. You're on digital maze duty. Do you think you can conjure up a paper trail so convoluted that even a quantum computer would get a headache? Zara pushed off from the console, a smirk playing on her lips. Captain, I could code a labyrinth that'd make Theseus want a GPS. She strolled to her station, where a holographic keyboard awaited her deft touch. With a dramatic flourish, she cracked her knuckles, each pop a symphony to procrastination's impending demise. She dove into the task, fingers rapidly tapping the glowing keys like a pianist in the throes of a concerto, notes of deception and confusion composing on her digital stave. Remember, folks, Captain Fred said, casting one last glance at the crew. Their forms huddled around various workstations, each lit by the soft glow of monitors. Precision and timing. If we're going to outsmart Agent Travers and her goons, we need to be as exact as we are creative. Because nothing says pirate life like proper form filling, Zara quipped without looking up, her coding frenzy unabated. Exactly, Fred agreed, his eyes sparking with an unspoken challenge. Let's fill out some forms. Gorvax Rindle loomed over the control panel, his scaly fingers tracing the outline of a red button strictly for show. This is what I call flex diplomacy he rumbled, the low frequency of his voice causing a nearby cup of synthetic coffee to jitter with fear. With a regal snort, he rolled up his sleeves, a pointless gesture since his uniform was sleeveless, to reveal biceps that could shame a space kraken. Remember, Gorvex, we're not actually crushing skulls, Captain Fred reminded him, an eyebrow raised in mock warning. Alas, Gorvex sighed theatrically his grin betraying his enjoyment of the ruse. One can dream. Across the room, Yorin Tassal fiddled with a gadget that looked suspiciously like a toy from a fast food kid's meal. But appearances were deceiving, like a quiet gaseous emission in a spacesuit. His arms worked in a blur, each appendage screwing, bolting, and recalibrating with the precision of a con artist at a shell game. Ah, the sweet serenade of unsanctioned modifications, Yorin murmured, his antenna wiggling with delight as he envisioned the DMV official's befuddlement. Sparks flew, briefly illuminating his insectoid features in a dance of light and shadow. Disruptive, distracting, and mildly annoying, Yorin said with a wink. Just like my last date, he remarked to a nearby crew member. It went pretty bad, he confessed out loud in a half-embarrassed tone. Is it supposed to make that sizzling sound? Another crew member asked, inching away from the potential explosion. Only if it wants to work tomorrow, Yorin replied, not looking up from his creation. The tool in his hand beeped affirmatively as if it understood the threat and eagerly agreed to function correctly. Gorvex chuckled, the sound echoing through the command center like a distant thunderclap. If looks could maim, you'd be our secret weapon, Yorin. Who says they can't? Yorin shot back, winking one of his compound eyes. I've been practicing my menacing glare. Save it for the DMV, Captain Fred said, clapping his hands together once. We've got bureaucracy to bamboozle. Dr. Luna Carter squinted at the holographic display as she furiously scrolled from page to page. She was knee deep in legalese, wading through the dense thicket of intergalactic statutes and ordinances that could make a synthetic life form weep hydraulic fluid. Clause 62, subsection D, no, too obvious, she muttered dismissing pages of text with flicks of her wrist. Her eyes, bright with intellectual fervor, 
devoured paragraph after subparagraph, searching for the golden needle in the bureaucratic haystack. Found it, Luna exclaimed, a triumphant grin splitting her face. A provisional codicil on the expiration of space-worthy permits, if and only if, a comet passes within a parsec of the issuing body's primary headquarters during a lunar eclipse. Ah, you've got to love cosmic technicalities, Captain Fred quipped from across the room. He paced like a caged feline with a caffeine addiction, his boots clicking rhythmically against the metal floor. Every few steps, he'd pause, head cocked, as if listening for the silent footsteps of DMV agents sneaking up behind him. Then, back to pacing. Good work, Luna, he said, nodding in approval. Now let's hope Agent Travers's head spins faster than a neutron star. Captain, Luna replied, her voice laced with a smirk. If her head spun any faster, we could generate enough energy to power the ship. Fred chuckled, allowing himself a momentary lapse into amusement before snapping back to the task at hand. He surveyed the command center, the heart of their mischievous enterprise, where each crew member was a cog in his grand scheme. Yorin, Gorvax, let's keep those distractions non-lethal. We don't want a paperwork snafu turning into an interstellar incident. His voice carried the weight of authority, softened by the hint of a jest. Define non-lethal, Yorin teased without looking up from his gadgets. Let's just say keep it to a level where they'll recover in time for their next coffee break, Fred responded, deadpan. Got it. Psychological warfare it is, Gorvax rumbled, cracking his knuckles with a sound like snapping twigs. All right, remember, folks, we're not just fighting the system. We're giving it an existential crisis, Fred declared, sly smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Luna, continue digging. I want every loophole so obscure it would take them until the next galactic alignment to find it. Understood. Luna answered, already diving back into the virtual labyrinth of regulations. As the 20 or so minutes approached, Captain Fred began signaling for his crew to wrap things up. Excellent, Fred said, clapping his hands together. Let's give them a bureaucratic black hole to ponder. Now, to your stations, everyone. He strode confidently to his chair, the command seat that had seen more action than a gladiator arena. As he settled in, the crew members exchanged looks that were equal parts weary determination and the giddy anticipation of executing a plan so audacious it bordered on lunacy. All right, team, Fred said, his eyes gleaming with the reflection of stars outside the viewport. Let's tangle some red tape. The crew nodded, their shared resolve unspoken, but as palpable as the clutter of forms surrounding them. With a final stretch, they settled back into their seats fortified by caffeine and camaraderie, ready to take on the galaxy's most daunting adversary. Imagine their faces, Zara chortled, lost in an endless loop of forgot-your-password prompts. Positions, everyone, Captain Fred barked, the command slicing through the murmurs of his motley crew. The ship's command center buzzed as every console and screen was alive and ready. It's time to introduce the DMV to our brand of customer service, Fred said, a hint of rebellion in his voice. And when we're done distracting the DMV, we heist. The command center erupted in cheers, and then that's when it happened. An awkward throat clearing like a rusty hinge. Everyone froze, the sound echoing through the comms. Captain Fred's eyes bulged as he immediately realized his mistake. You never ended the call, did you? He whispered, his voice a strangled squeak. His crew looked around in utter confusion. Yeah, the familiar voice breathed disappointingly over the comms. You never ended our conversation, Captain Alistair, said Agent Cynthia Travers. I merely turned off my hollow image, and the channel remained open. Captain Fred looked around the room at his crew in shock. So, um, did, uh, you happen to be on long? He spoke into the air of the command center. A long sigh came back. The entire 22 minutes and 43 seconds, replied Agent Cynthia Travers. Gasps filled the room. Did she happen to hear my quip about my last date? 
whispered Yorin nervously as Captain Fred shot him back a <laughs> not now look. Because the date didn't really go that bad, Yorin muttered desperately to anyone who would listen. We had galactic gourmet burgers. Yorin, Zara shot him a look to shut him up. What? He said nervously. I don't want that date on my DMV record. Enough, blurted out Agent Travers. And yes, the paperwork has been filed for your failed date, Agent Travers said matter-of-factly. Oof, someone exclaimed in the room. So, uh, Agent Travers, Captain Fred began, how much of our plan did you happen to hear? All of it, she chirped. And look, the deadly force authorization paperwork just came back. How convenient. Now, shall we begin? That gleeful note in her voice sent shivers down everyone's spines. Fire, Agent Travers hissed before cutting the transmission. Zig left, zag right, Zara barked, her spiky red hair a fiery blur as she whipped the star marauder through a maelstrom of laser fire. The ship groaned and creaked under stress, but Zara's grip on the controls was as steady as a surgeon's hand. If the surgeon piloted starships and the operating room shot back. Lasers, why did it have to be lasers? She muttered, a smirk tugging at her lips despite the imminent danger. Would you prefer arrows? They're easier to dodge. Gorvax quipped from his station, his reptilian tail swishing in amusement. His large eyes flickered over the shield's status, glowing indicators reflecting off his green scales like some avant-garde disco. Arrows don't sound half bad, Zara replied, throwing the ship into a dive that would make a roller coaster jealous. Shields up, Gorvax announced, less like he was warning of impending doom and more like he was declaring happy hour. He slammed his clawed hand down on the console, and the star marauder shimmered with a protective aura. It was like wrapping an elephant in bubble wrap, oddly adequate. Nice timing, Zara said, the ship shuddering as a laser blast sizzled against the newly formed shield. Indeed, Gorvax hissed proudly, watching the energy readouts dance like sugar plums in his head. Gloat later. Evasive maneuvers now, Zara shot back, her focus razor sharp as she navigated the attack with the precision of a cat threading through a field of rocking chairs. Assessment, trapped like rats in a cosmic maze, Gorvax observed, not one for sugarcoating their situation, unless it involved actual sugarcoating, which he found delightful on pastries. Correction, like space rats in a very stylish ship, Zara corrected, yanking the controls to avoid another volley of lasers. Space rats with moxie. Affirmative. Moxie levels are at maximum, Gorvax confirmed, his voice holding the gravitas of a professor during pop quiz time. Keep those shields shiny, Gorvax, Zara instructed, weaving through the barrage with the ease of a seasoned pro. I've got a reputation to uphold and a planet to heist. Understood. The shields shall remain as unblemished as my record of never having lost at Galactic Monopoly, Gorvax assured her, a hint of pride lacing his tone. Let's hope your winning streak includes getting us out of this mess, Zara said, her hands a whirlwind on the controls as they dove deeper into the fray, ready to face whatever the intergalactic DMV threw their way. We got incoming, Fred slammed a fist on the console. The star marauder bucking as a blast rocked it too close for comfort. We need a miracle people, preferably one with poor eyesight and this fondness for exotic cheeses. Zara's laugh echoed from the pilot's chair. Incoming miracles are out of stock. Substitute plan. Operation Confuse and Conquer. She executed a roll so sharp that Fred swore he saw the paperwork piled around him briefly levitate. Captain Fred nodded. You're in with me to the airlock. I got a plan. 